In this lecture, we will look at how to apply the Gaussian mixture model in code. As usual, you can look at the title of the notebook to determine what notebook we are currently looking at. To begin this lecture, we're not going to use the scikit-learn GMM right away, but rather we're going to just create our own test GMM and check its kurtosis. This should give you some intuition for how the GMM can in fact achieve heavy tails, which might seem surprising. We'll start by creating 500 data points, evenly spaced between minus 0.1 and plus 0.1. We'll call that X list. Next, we generate the PDF for an arbitrary mixture model. Note that I've chosen these numbers randomly. So my mixture proportion will be 0.5. I assign that to the variable P. Next, I set FX to be P times one Gaussian PDF plus one minus P times a different Gaussian PDF. I've chosen these Gaussians to have the same mean, but different variants. So this one has standard deviation 0.01. This one has standard deviation 0.002. Next, I plot the PDF using the plot function. As you can see, this has the characteristics we saw in our returns. It has a very tall head, skinny shoulders, but unfortunately the tails are hard to see. However, we can easily check the kurtosis. So in this next block of code, we're going to generate samples from our made up distribution, and then we're going to check the sample kurtosis of those samples. We'll start by creating an empty list called samples. Next, we create variables for the parameters of our Gaussians, M0, S0, M1, and S1. You can double check that these are the same parameters as above. Next, we enter a loop. Inside the loop, we generate a random number between 0 and 1. We check if the random number is less than p. If it is, we generate a random number using Gaussian 0, otherwise we use Gaussian 1. You should be able to confirm to yourself that this uses Gaussian 0 with probability p and Gaussian 1 with probability 1 minus p. So we choose Gaussian 0 p percent of the time, and we choose Gaussian 1 1 minus p percent of the time. Inside the if statements, we use the norm.rvs function to generate a random sample from the normal with the given parameters. When we're outside the loop, we convert our list of samples into a pandas series so that we can easily use the kurtosis function. Finally, we call the kurtosis function. As you can see, we get a number bigger than zero, which suggests that our samples have heavy tails relative to the normal. Next, we're going to use a Gaussian mixture model to fit a distribution to actual stock returns. We'll start by taking the returns from our Starbucks dataset. We drop any missing values, convert the result to a NumPy array, and then reshape the array so that it's two-dimensional. Remember, we want something of shape n by d when we're using scikit-learn. Next, we instantiate a Gaussian mixture object. One downside to the Gaussian mixture model is that you have to choose the number of Gaussians. Since two is enough to generate heavy tails, we'll use two. Next, we'll call model.fit to fit the data. Now at this point, in order to actually draw the PDF of our fitted distribution, we need the parameters of our fitted model. Luckily, I've already looked at the documentation, so I know which attributes I need. You may want to check out the documentation yourself to confirm that what I've done is right. First, we need the mixture components, which are stored in model.weights. Next, we need the mean of each Gaussian, which are stored in model.means. Lastly, we need the covariances, which are stored in model.covariances. Now, you'll notice that the shapes are kind of strange. It looks like the means and the covariances have a lot of extra dimensions. The reason for that is, remember that scikit-learn models work with multi-dimensional data. Our returns are just one-dimensional. In general, your data will have shape n by d, where d is the number of features. So each mean vector will be a vector of size d. And if you have k Gaussians, then all of your means together will be of size k by d. Furthermore, each covariance matrix will be of size d by d. So if you have k Gaussians, then all of your covariances together will be k by d by d. For us, since our d equals one and our k equals two, the means are two by one and the covariances are two by one by one, which are actually just the variances. There are no covariances since we only have a single dimension. 
Next, we flatten the means and the covariances to convert them into one-dimensional arrays since the one dimensions are redundant. Next, we begin to generate the data for our plot. First, we create a list of x's from the min value to the max value. Next, we create the PDF for the first Gaussian, which I'll call fx0. Then we create the PDF for the second Gaussian, which I'll call fx1. Finally, we create the PDF for the full model by weighting the two Gaussians by the weights we got earlier. And remember, these are all parameters from the fitted model. Finally, we draw a histogram of our returns along with our fitted density. As you can see, the Gaussian mixture fits much better than just a single Gaussian. It captures the tall head, the skinny shoulders, and the fat tails.